This is quarterback Will Levis, and you're listening to the Best Bell Fantasy Podcast. Hey, hey. Really, the only thing that gonna be normal is distribution. Normal folks gonna infuse some. Optimize your lineups and you feed the rest, you mute them. Turning it up, these numbers are loud. Peeping this game from a Nimbus is wild. Making it, making it rain while I embrace all this risk, I'm insane. Talking about that best bell. I'm the best, best, best tell. Into the next world. Guess I got next still. Best bell, I'm the best, best, best till Into the next world Guess I got next still Hey, hey Really the only thing that gonna be normal is distribution Normal folks gonna infuse some Optimize your lineups in your And welcome in to the Best Bell Fantasy Football Podcast and live stream. I'm Bradley Stalder. You can follow me on Twitter at FFStalder. And if you love tonight's content, make sure to hit that red subscribe button. Tonight, it's going to be posted actually on Tuesday, but I've been doing a regular uh, last couple weeks mock draft Monday. So posted for Tuesday, doing it on Monday. It's been a busy Monday. It's Valentine's Day weekend or was it's a lot of craziness, whatever. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate y'all taking the time and watching and going along with me. I'm going to talk through some of the fantasy trends and values that I notice in this 2023 NFL mock draft. I'm not going to really focus on landing spot because, frankly, landing spot uh, can change a lot and there can be trades involved. But I am more concerned, as I mentioned in last Monday's mock draft, what is the draft capital that particular players are going to get? So my focus is going to be on the first four rounds of this 2023 NFL rookie mock draft. That's where the most impact, most bang for your buck is going to happen. If you are drafting rookies, you want them in the first four rounds. Usually, you know, round one, of course, has the highest hit rates. And then round two and three and four. It makes sense, though. Draft capital is a reflection of team scouting and if teams are scouting these players the film bros uh, <laughs> in nfl teams are are identifying that that these players are going to excel at the next level then that should be a strong indication to us that they are going to do well for fantasy as well so uh one of the things that i'm going to do is go on to the Pro Football Focus Draft Simulator. For those who are unfamiliar, Pro Football Focus has this really nice 2023 mock draft simulator. You can do it hundreds of times, thousands of times, and you can pick as any one of the teams or all of the teams if you would like to do an entire mock draft yourself. I'm not going to do that, but to get this draft moving along, I'm just going to go with the Houston Texans. It's pretty easy to choose uh, for Houston what they need. So we're going to take a look at some of the default settings. You can change the default settings. I'm not going to change anything. I think the last time when I changed some of the advanced settings, it really messed up some of the draft. So it's going to give us a pretty good idea of where PFF uh, is going to uh, project these players' draft capital. And I trust PFF's draft capital better than a lot of other sites out there. There are some sites that are pretty strong, uh, but PFF is one of them. One of the the anecdotal evidence that I want to give is is PFF was very low on Isaiah Spiller this past year. And and Isaiah Spiller uh, was highly touted in some of the fantasy communities even throwing him in the Kenneth Walker and Brees Hall conversation I was uh, hesitant and skeptical and when PFF put him as a day three maybe fourth fifth round running back uh, that was red flags for me so for for moving on PFF has its hits has its misses but so does everyone else in this scouting community but for the sake of efficiency and the sake of finding out where these players are going to go. We're going to just model this through and see how it goes. So as you can tell, the defaults are a little less for 
care for positional value, a stronger care for drafting for needs for these teams, and not a ton of randomness. Remember last time I put the randomness on really high and CJ Stroud ended up in like the fourth or fifth round? That's never going to happen in this draft, or at least I don't think so. Uh, we are going to have more than two rounds. Uh, we're going to change the speed here. Let's go mock draft simulator. Yeah. Do, 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 do. There's usually more rounds than that. So, no, I don't want all. Usually there are more rounds. So, let me see if we can. I don't know why it's only showing up as two rounds, but is it because I'm logged in? No. Okay. There we go. Whatever. We're going to enter the draft, and it, the speed is going to be slow. I want to pause at certain places just like I did last time, and we're going to enter the draft as the Houston Texans. Okay, cool. So we've got uh, two rounds here, and we're going to start the draft, and the Chicago Bears are first up, and they're going to go with Will Anderson in this draft. Uh, look, the Bears are going to pick anybody at, at first uh, they may trade out of it i projected that it's smart for them to trade out of it i think a lot of people are projecting that but also the the give and take is that everyone knows that the bears are going to have to trade out of it so we'll see what kind of package the bears have and what kind of leverage they'll get in this trade but nevertheless bryce young is the smash draft pick for me here the the houston texans get the quarterback jalen carter goes three uh, out of Georgia, C.J. Stroud goes four to the Indianapolis Colts. Let's pause there for a second. In the last mock draft that I did on PFF, C.J. Stroud went like in the fourth, fifth round. Ridiculous. But Will Levis was the fourth pick overall. And that's interesting that now Stroud is that pick over Levis. And, and that's how I would have it right now. I, I like Will Levis as a, as a person and friend of the podcast. Uh, but ultimately, I think he would be better served on a team where he can learn how to be an NFL quarterback. There are some some concerns and questions about what he can do at the next level, and he needs to prove that he can do it. Uh, a low big time throw rate, a low PFF passer grading. There, there's just a lot of red flags for an immediate starting spot for Will Levis. I would want him to get some more game action in, learn his, uh, learn his position a little bit better. I, I, my fear is that he will be drafted too early and that will stunt his development in the NFL. So I hope that uh, for, for his sake, actually, that he can drop a little bit so that you know a team that doesn't need to use him right away can develop him and mature him a little bit in the NFL. Let's resume this draft. Uh, the Lions are picking at six, and they go with Tyree Wilson, edge rusher. Will Levis goes seventh for the Raiders, who are expected to release Derek Carr tomorrow, Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to say I'm not your Valentine anymore, but Derek Carr, $40 million is not guaranteed anymore. Uh, that's the expectation. Will Levis though, going at seven, we've seen him drop a little bit. Now I had seen him consistently drafted at four on PFF. Now for him to drop to seven, I really, really do hope that he continues to, to drop a little bit as we get closer to the combine and closer to the draft. I, I think that's, what's going to be best for him. Ultimately, I know it it may hurt him in the immediate like starting uh, starting possibility, but I think it's best for his long term career if he can get some some mentorship, can play behind uh, can play behind a veteran quarterback and learn the ropes a little bit. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons select Anthony Richardson. I would be in on Anthony Richardson getting there at eight. That would be a very, very interesting play because Richardson was only a little bit better from the passing perspective, but he was an absolute threat on the ground. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, Jalen Hurts level, but but Anthony Anthony Richardson can could develop into something very, very powerful and potent in this league. We'll see if the NFL views him that way as polished enough of a passer especially being scared off by the likes of Malik Willis from last year. Certainly Richardson, not 
the Malik Willis type of passer. He's he's a, certainly a level up. However, um, it will be interesting to see if he can get that early first 10 picks or so draft capital. Uh, number nine here going off the board, wide receiver Quinton Johnson to the Carolina Panthers. If Quinton Johnson gets top 10 draft capital, oh boy, that's going to be major, major uh, fantasy implications because as we saw last year, you know, Garrett Wilson going off in the 10th overall, right? Drake London in the top 10 as well. Uh, Quinton Johnson, if he can be a top 10 pick, oh boy, that would be, uh, that would make all of those picks of Quinton Johnson in the early drafts of, of 2023 uh, outside the top 36 of wide receiver, absolute massive value. So if he can get that top 10 draft capital, wheels up for Quinton Johnson's fantasy value. All right. The Eagles select a cornerback in this. Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa goes to the Tennessee Titans. And on the clock, the Houston Texans. That means it's me. And the Texans need some defensive lineman so we're gonna go with um with yeah brian breesey out of clemson defensive interior okay yeah the jets go with a tackle paris johnson for the patriots uh miles murphy edge to green bay brian branch safety can't see out of Pittsburgh goes to Pittsburgh Jones. The tackle go out of Georgia goes to the lions. So there's not been a lot of fantasy implications except for um, Smith and Jigba goes to the Seattle Seahawks in the top 20 of picks. So Jackson Smith and Jigba has been projected in that first round in almost all of the mocks I've seen. Sometimes it's ranged from 18 to all the way to 30, but right now at 20, I could see uh, Smith and Jigba going to the, the Colts. I could see him going to the Lions. I don't know if the Steelers would use him, but the Baltimore Ravens could certainly use a wide receiver uh, with, with Bateman on the outside and Smith and Jigba maybe in the slot. That would be pretty potent. Uh, we'll see if Smith and Jigba is there. Remember, the Miami Dolphins don't have a, a first-round pick due to the forfeit and, and the league's tampering policies. So <laughs> we'll see if Smith and Jigba is a top-20 pick. And then Jordan Addison goes 21 to the Chargers. Uh, they all, all three of those, Addison, Quinton Johnson, and Smith and Jigba, all seem to be getting first-round draft capital based on the mocks I've been doing. Let's see if the Baltimore Ravens go with the wide receiver here. And they do. They go with Zay Flowers. So Zay Flowers, once again, gets first-round draft capital. So those have been pretty consistent in that first round. Zay Flowers, Addison, Quinton Johnson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Okay. And Dalton Kincaid gets first-round draft capital in this mock draft. I don't see... Michael Mayer going off. That means that Kincaid is the first tight end off the board in this mock draft. That is uh, the first time I think I've seen Kincaid mocked ahead of Mayer, but we'll see if that trend continues. It's just something of note. Um, yeah, Kincaid is being all but forgotten about in some of the very early 2023 first uh, 2023 drafts and he had a higher PFF receiving grade than Michael Mayer. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Bijan Robinson goes in the first round to the Buffalo Bills in this mock. Michael Mayer goes also first round to the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Tanner McKee gets first round draft capital to the Saints. If Derek Carr signs with the Saints, I don't think that the Saints draft a quarterback at this spot. Instead, you know, maybe they trade back or try to get more picks. Honestly, I think that 
the the Saints are in a lot in, in in a bind. Maybe they trade back and also try to trade Michael Thomas during the draft as well. That may be an opportunity for them to offload some of these contracts while also recouping some some youth because ultimately they've gotten lucky on some of their some of their picks, but also they kind of mortgage the future, right? In trying to get Chris Olave. So this this Tanner McKee pick is assuming that Derek Carr probably doesn't go to New Orleans. New Orleans is going to need a quarterback because I don't know if Jameis Winston is going to be going to be the answer for them at this point. Uh, it's a it's wide open there in New Orleans. Okay, we'll see what the last couple picks of the first round are. Uh, see if any fancy relevant players sneak in. Nope, the answer was no. <laughs> so the Houston Texans are back on the clock. And uh, let's see, Ojolari is there. We may just take Ojolari out of LSU at 33. Get that defensive line all squared away. Nathaniel Dell gets first round draft cap. Top 34 pick. Nathaniel Dell. Tank Dell. He's not a tank in build. But uh, <laughs> getting that top 34 draft capital is going to mean a lot for uh, for Nathaniel Dell. I don't I ha this is the earliest I've seen Dell get mocked. So we'll take this with a grain of salt. Could we see the Texans pair up Bryce Young with a wide receiver here in the early second round? Maybe it's Dell. Maybe it's another receiver. But would not surprise me with Brandon cooks probably on his way out. Nico Collins, an unproven lower upside player out of Michigan. Who's been dealing with injuries. And then you've got who else, right? Chris Moore, right? <laughs> There's not really a lot of other options. John Mechie is coming back from cancer and an ACL tear. Like I look, I love John Mechie. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of risk there. And you have to think that the Houston Texans are, are going to have to invest in wide receiver here in the draft uh, unless they go out and get some, some veteran support. Okay. Luke Musgrave goes off at pick 37. Josh Downs at pick 38. Downs an early declare. If he can go to the Raiders paired with another uh, the the new quarterback that they select, whether it's Richardson, whether it's Levis, whether it's you know Stroud, we'll see. But Josh Downs is going to be one of those top forty wide receivers picked in this draft. That's where I've consistently seen him. I haven't seen him outside the top forty of any spot. Sometimes he gets early, late first round draft capital, but in this instance, he is a early second round draft capital player. So just keep an eye on Josh Downs out of North Carolina. And of course, if you like the content, what I bring to y'all, make sure you hit that red subscribe button it really helps the channel grow and get better. Okay, there we go. We see some guards and linebackers go off the board edge for Green Bay, Bowling Green, Carl Brooks, Edge, goes off the Patriots. A bunch of defensive players here in the middle of the second round. This is going to be a really solid defensive player draft. Wipler out of Ohio State goes to the Bucks. Kayshawn Boutte gets second round draft capital. What to make of Boutte? Like, we were really in on him early in his collegiate career, but it seems like things got a little wonky at LSU and, and sure we can excuse that away in some senses, but there's at least an eyebrow raise. We want to see what he does at the combine. We want to see what kind of draft capital he gets. Uh, what does the NFL view about Boutte? Because if the NFL says, look like you are an early first round or an early second round, late first round draft capital, player boom we should be in on him but if he's relegated to the back end of the second round third round then it, man, 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 there's a lot more risk there uh, and at pick 51 this is kind of hedged a little bit i think this is the ambiguity right now of what are we going to get with Keishon Boutte? 
We don't know. He's not a player that I'm targeting uh, in the early 2023 drafts as rookies. Like maybe I'll get a sprinkling of him here or there, but I'm not going out of my way to say, you know, Keishon Boutte, I need, he's a need must have rookie at this point in early February, well, mid February, I guess now, because this, this video is going to be posted on February 14th, but Keishon Boutte, Mid second round pick in this mock draft. We will see if that's where he and ends up. Jameer Gibbs. Ooh, okay. Let's pause for a second. Uh, if Jameer Gibbs gets mid second round draft capital, I mean, I I did a mock last week and Jameer Gibbs like barely squeaked into the first round. If Jameer Gibbs can get mid second round draft capital or better that's going to be great for fantasy regardless of where he lands like as we saw last year Brees hall and kenneth walker crushed in the second round like before Brees hall left with the acl he was absolutely on fire and one of the most consistent floor running backs in the nfl with a couple ceiling weeks and then kenneth walker 10 percent of kenneth walker's weeks were as a top five running back and that's including some of the Rashad Penny weeks. So he's got upside and Jameer Gibbs is going to be wherever he lands a versatile fantasy relevant running back that needs to be drafted. I've been seeing him draft in the seventh round and the eighth round. And I think that's the perfect spot to draft Gibbs if you can get him. Uh, so consider Jameer Gibbs as your Kenneth Walker equivalent, not necessarily in build or, or in fancy projection, but in roster construction, if you are drafting right now, you should be thinking where was Kenneth Walker being drafted last year in fantasy drafts. And that's where Jameer Gibbs should probably go in your seventh or eighth rounds. If he's going earlier than that, maybe you can get in on that, but you should be comfortable smashing that draft button with Jameer Gibbs getting second mid second round draft capital does not matter where uh, he lands. Ultimately, I think if you, if you get second round draft capital, the team is going to plan to use you. Lions are on the clock. Takes an edge rusher, Alabama cornerback, Eli Ricks off the board, Sam Laporta tight end gets second round draft capital. Zach Charbonnet, Gets second round draft capital here for Dallas. Wow, was a all right. That's gonna put a damper in some of my Tony Pollard shares, but I'm not too worried about or fixated on the landing spot. More so that Charbonnet is going to get that second round draft capital. I have seen him mocked consistently in that second round. As I mentioned before about Jameer Gibbs, maybe Charbonnet is closer to Gibbs in fantasy relevance. If he gets this second round draft capital, then maybe Charbonnet is in with the other running backs. So let's pay attention to how early teams are going to take Charbonnet uh, out of UCLA. If he is almost third round, maybe that's a little less eyebrow raising, but if he's really close to Jameer Gibbs, that's going to be a nice value. All right, we've got a few picks left in this second round, and I guess I wasn't able to get a full four rounds out of here, but nevertheless, getting two rounds of the mock draft, we got some fancy relevant players, so let's look at the full results. Okay, just to recap, Bryce Young went off, and <laughs> I'm really comfortable taking him as a slam dunk second pick overall to Houston. We saw Stroud and then Levis and then Richardson mocked. Quinton Johnson got top 10 draft capital in this draft. Um, and then we looked at Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers. It's going to be interesting which order those players are going to be in. I haven't seen a consensus order yet in the mock drafts I've been watching, but uh, Zay Flowers still getting first round draft capital. That's going to be really nice. Dalton Kincaid 
gets first round draft capital along with Michael Mayer, the two tight ends that are expected to get first round draft capital, a surprising Tanner McKee getting uh, into the first round at pick 29. Bijan Robinson does get first round draft capital. That's been pretty consistent. Robinson's been very regularly mocked between pick 18 and, and pick now 28. So somewhere in there, uh, whether he lands on Buffalo or Cincinnati or Dallas or the, the, the Vikings, if they decide to cut Dalvin cook, we'll see what happens, but I don't think he's going to fall past that stretch of Dallas, Buffalo or Cincinnati. Uh, let's see. Nathaniel Dell tank Dell goes off in the early, early second round. Luke Musgrave gets early second round tight end draft capital. Josh Downs follows suit. And then we get a lot of scrolling. Kayshawn Boutte does get second round draft capital in this mock. And then Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta out of Iowa, Zach Charbonnet rounded out for uh, the the first two rounds of this mock draft. So yes, it was a shorter mock draft. Maybe I'll do another bonus mock draft later on this week. See if I can get some more rounds in for you. But this is uh, what I got for you today. Thanks so much, everyone. And of course, if you like the content, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. It really helps support the channel. All right, everyone. Until next time, good luck in the fancy football streets. This is quarterback Will Levis, and you're listening to the Best Bell Fantasy Podcast. I embrace all this risk, I'm insane. Talking about that best bell, I'm the best, best, best tail. Into the next world. Guess I got next still. Best bell, I'm the best, best, best tail. Into the next world. Guess I got next still.